Hey everyone, welcome to Vortex Garage. We've got our 2003 Lincoln Town Car back in the shop and we're going to resolve a little bit more steering issues, steering binding. Now you might recall, and I'll flash a video up here, not long ago we replaced the lower intermediate steering shaft, which is the one that has a very complex set of U-joints and it connects from the steering rack to the upper intermediate shaft. And that one's often the cause for binding and steering on cars like this, whether it be a town car or other Panther chassis cars, like a Crown Vic, Grand Marquis, Marauder, etc. Well, when we did that, our binding pretty much went away, but there was still a little bit, and it kind of came back a little while later, and it turned out it was the upper intermediate shaft, which also has a U-joint. And we've got that part here. So this U-joint, and you'll see it, this is where you actually remove the bolt uh, on this pinch area when you remove the lower shaft and this particular U-joint right here is now binding on our car. So honestly, we should have replaced both of them at the same time, but I thought only the bottom one was gonna need replacement. So here we are again, but luckily this is a pretty easy job to do. Now this part, we'll go ahead and get you the part number, which is actually printed on the shaft here. And we've also got it on the box. We'll post that and we'll also post a link on where you can get it. Now this particular one I got from Tasca Ford, who is a pretty big internet Ford part seller. Uh, they're a dealer up in the Northeast. There's also a few others like Varsity Ford and uh, several others that I can't remember right offhand that are a little more internet savvy when it comes to selling parts. They do two good things. They ship pretty quickly, they have a good website, and they have discounted prices. Now if I were to go buy this in my local Ford dealer, quite frankly, they would screw me. Right? Excuse the term, but that's what they would do. I would go there and they would quote me a price that was very much to list. I am so sick of dealing with them. You can even like barter for parts prices at these dealers and I just don't want to deal with it. Luckily, places like Tasca and Varsity know that people like me don't like driving down just to get into a fight with the parts guy. I can just click a button, order it, and it shows up and I don't get ripped off on the price. So here we are. That's where I got the part and I'll link to them and you can go ahead and pick one up as well. I don't know if any aftermarket companies remake this. I know a few remake the lower shaft and we covered that in the last video. Stay away, don't bother. I don't trust aftermarket parts in general and I really don't wanna put an aftermarket steering shaft in the car that's just gonna fail within a couple months. I want the OEM piece. And yes, I know the OEM piece has failed and that's what we're replacing, but this is a 2003 and it's currently 2021. So that part went almost 20 years before it started binding. That's not too bad. All right, so this is a pretty simple part to put in. We're gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. You only really need a 10 millimeter and a 13 millimeter socket. And you also need one of these. This is a steering wheel brace. Now we talked about bracing the steering wheel when we did the lower shaft, but it's actually even more important when you do the upper intermediate shaft. So make sure you got one of these. Now our job's gonna be half out of the car and half in the car. And the good news is, is for the upper intermediate shaft, you don't have to raise the car off the ground. So we've got ours sitting here. We're gonna grab the camera and try to show you what we do as we go along. And hopefully it'll be nice and simple. All right, that's nice and braced. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove that pinch bolt off of the uh, upper intermediate and lower intermediate shafts. See if I can do this one-handed. Okay, and here it is. All right, once that bolt's removed, we're gonna go ahead and separate the lower shaft from the upper intermediate shaft. And we'll set that aside. Now's the time where you wanna make sure your steering wheel's braced and you don't turn the wheel at all or you'll be having to reset your clock spring. All right, so we've removed the bolt that holds the upper intermediate shaft and lower intermediate shaft. And we're gonna do the same thing in the car that holds from the bottom of the column to the upper shaft. And some things that you're gonna to wanna to bear in mind here, according to the service manual, you need to replace this bolt. Now, I can't tell you why Ford asks you to replace this. 
A lot of times bolts are replaced because they're torqued to yield, but sometimes manufacturers require that because they have pre-applied Loctite and they don't want the tech to miss the Loctite and it's a very special Loctite compound. The fact is this is steering. It's a, it's a bolt for the steering. And if this were to come loose, you would lose your steering while you're driving. So I gotta abide by what the service manual says here. The service manual says to replace this bolt. All right, so we're gonna head up under our dash. All we need is a 10 millimeter ratchet and we're gonna use our battery powered one there, which is nice and handy. Now I pulled this out. This is a kick panel that's underneath. It's held on by a couple push pins. It's pretty simple to remove with an interior panel remover, which we have right here. And with that out of the way, you don't technically need to remove it. You can see everything you need to, well, you can reach the bolt, but it's a little harder to see. So if you wanna see everything a little clearer, go ahead and remove it. We did it so that you can see everything on camera a little easier. Let's go ahead and show you what we're working with. So here is our steering shaft. This is the upper intermediate shaft. It comes through the firewall here in this bearing, and we may need to remove that as we go. The service manual does call for it, so we'll probably remove that to gain some clearance to remove this piece. What we're looking for is this bolt right here. It's a 10 millimeter pinch bolt and it's right before you get to your rag joint or your rubber isolator, and then this goes into your steering column here. Now, as a reminder, you saw us do it, but our steering is braced, so we're gonna make sure this does not turn. If this turns while that's disconnected, it can cause the clock spring to get reset or to come out of sync and you gotta reset it, and that can cause electrical problems specifically to your airbag. So, I'm going to try to position this as best I can so we can go ahead and remove so we can go ahead and remove that bolt. All right, I think you can see. So let's go ahead and remove our bolt. All right, you're going to have to break the Loctite loose. Then you can go ahead and remove it. And you can see from the factory, there's some blue thread locker on it. Now the service manual says to discard this. So we're gonna do what the service manual says. All right, so once that is out, we should be able to drop the shaft down out of the steering column. There we go. All right, you wouldn't believe it if I told you, but you're gonna have to. These are 11 millimeter. We used a deep well socket here to take the nuts off the stud. I wasn't recording is what I mean to say. So we're trying to catch up because I forgot to hit record. So uh, I took these off, 11 millimeter with a deep well socket, and then you can pop off this bearing from the studs here. All right, once you do that, you've got a lot of clearance and room here. You can take that bearing off and you can see the bearing in there. So it's a good time to inspect this. Keep this the right orientation so you put it back correctly. And then you can go ahead and pull the shaft out. And very carefully, you should be able to feed it through the firewall. So here it is. Now, I've been spraying this with all kinds of lubricant, so we're going to be careful of our carpet so we don't make a mess. All right, so we've got our old one out of the car. And let's compare it to our nice new one. So the nice new one, very easy to move, but it feels new and you know tight enough that it's new. Able to move in all the directions nice and smooth. The one we took out of the car that is almost 20 years old, it actually feels pretty decent this way. There's, uh, it's not too sloppy uh, and it moves pretty smoothly, but this way, just to kind of give you an idea, I can hold the shaft like that on this one. I try to do the same. Okay, that's what sort of movement there is. There's this one. I can hold on its own and I can pretty much put it anywhere. There's a little bit of drop like right there and then it, it'll stop in many of the places. So you can kind of feel it's very tight. It kind of grinds and just feels kind of crunchy. So this is the one that was really bad. So that's 
because we're replacing it. So it's only bad in one direction here, but it's enough to cause binding in the steering. If you think about it, when this is trying to, to turn, you know, it wants to have that universal movement that's what that joint gives it. Whereas this one, when it turns, there's tons of easy movement. So this is really going to make this car a lot more enjoyable to drive. It'll still have nice tight steering, but it won't have that bind in the middle. Let's go ahead and put this part in. All right, then coming back under the car, we're gonna go ahead and feed this through. But before we get it fully mounted up, what I wanna do is look, as you can see, there's a bit of a indent here where the pinch bolt goes through. This is what helps retain this. So I want, of this square, I want the area where that pinch bolt goes to go right where the pinch bolt is. So it's actually the far backside one. So I'm gonna to wanna to orient, orientate that correctly. Okay, we'll push that through. So we've got the bearing plate on here. We've got our piece pushed in. And here's where our pinch bolt's gonna go. It's gonna go up here, so we wanna have it just like that. And we'll get that pushed in. And then we'll push our bearing collar back down. It's a little bit of a two-hand operation there. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead Take our bolts, put our bolts back on here. And we got one here. So I'm just gonna cinch these down and then I am gonna torque them to spec. You don't, you know, you should always make sure it's not sitting behind the rubber isolator there. The uh, torque value is 80 inch pounds, so it's not very much, and you certainly don't want to snap those studs off. That's it. You can do these. These, I would say, if you want to do them by feel, if you're skilled, you can do that. I don't mind torquing stuff, but you don't want to snap those off. You'll be in up Shits Creek. All right, there we go. So those are now torqued to spec, and those hold that bearing on. All right, now we can go ahead and get our pinch bolt and put it in. And if we need to, we can push that back up in there. So let's go ahead and get our pinch bolt put on. Alright, 22 pound feet. Now we can come up under and we can reconnect these two pieces. All right, we've gone ahead and put our plastic piece back on. And we can go ahead and remove our steering wheel brace. Nice thing is we know for sure our steering wheel didn't turn, so we have no issues with our clock spring. All right, let's see how our steering feels. <laughs> All right, you saw that on camera. I put in a brand new Bosch starter last year maybe not even a year ago and i'm dealing with that and i got a perfectly good battery as we just talked about so that's the next thing i'm going to look at is the starter so let's see if it'll start for us i just i don't know what, what's going on with it to be honest with you See, and then like that, it'll just magically start. So we're gonna have to figure that out, obviously. 
Anyway, what we're here to do is check our steering. Oh, -ho -ho. it is so smooth. That is so nice. It is, I don't realize what I thought was right before when I fixed the main part of the binding, just the overall smoothness and like ease of turning at a stop went up. So thumbs up. All right. All right. And just like that, we're all set and complete. The car runs awesome. The steering feels amazing. And it was this part right here. And this one was actually easier to replace than the other one. I thought this one was going to be harder because it involved getting up under the dash. But honestly, everything was super easy to get to. Big things, brace the steering wheel. You don't even have to lift the car up to get this one off. Get the other one off, put this one on. Do what the book says with the bolts, throw them out and get new ones, and you're good to go, ready to go down the road. So I'm excited to have this back in. Now you heard our starter when we went to start the car. We're gonna have to work on that next. I've already rambled on about that. I'll add it in if I think it's important, um, but look for that sometime later. We'll talk about what we end up doing there. It's just a bummer of aftermarket parts, and I'm gonna, again, try to stick with dealer parts when it comes to stuff on this car. Other than that, we're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. We'll have more stuff like this and many other things here on Vortex Garage. So drop us a like, a subscribe, and a comment. It helps us out in the algorithm. Everyone says that. You probably already know it. But if you enjoyed it, we appreciate that. We'll see you again here on Vortex Garage.